So the theme today is biblical support of how God's nature and grace motivate us to obey Him. Now the reason why I have this um, title, this teaching today is because uh, when I look at the assignments of many people, they just tell uh, people what to do instead of motivating them with God's nature and grace. Now it's very important uh, to realize that in the Bible, God and Jesus has used uh, God's nature and His grace to motivate us. And in many of the uh, commandment, what to do, He tell us uh, how He would reward us, how He would strengthen us, how He would provide for us uh, when we obey Him. So He uses His grace and His nature, His love and His power to motivate us to obey Him. And uh, so we, it's very important that we don't just tell people uh, read the Bible, pray, and preach the gospel. This is all commandment. Now, if people are just motivated, uh, if people are just motivated to obey by hearing the commandment, uh, sometimes people can lose the motivation. Sometimes people can lose the motivation. So it's very important that... Um, Oh, it's very important that we have a continual motivation to obey God. Uh, we have the continual motivation to obey God when we know that God is happy with us when we love Him and trust Him. When we obey Him, God is very happy and bless us. And uh, in many of the commandments in the Bible, when God tells us to do something, He always gives us motivation with His nature and His grace. So I hope we all understand this and then so in assignments in the future that you always put in the motivation with God's nature and His grace. Okay now uh, the Bible talks about the necessary fruit of salvation. The necessary fruit of salvation. That means when we are saved, we always obey Him. When we are saved, we always obey Him. So, um, it's a necessary. These fruits are necessary. That is necessary that we obey Him. That we bear this fruit when we believe in Jesus. Now, we are not saved by doing good. It's very important to understand that. We are not saved by doing good. We are saved by grace through faith. When we repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we'll be saved. We are saved by grace through faith when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. But when we are saved, we'll always bear fruit. And these are three groups of fruit. So it's necessary for us to obey God in these ways. But God has given us motivation for each of these, when we obey each of these, He gives us the motivation to obey this. And uh, the necessary fruit of salvation, the first group is related to salvation. When we are saved, we repent of our sins and we trust in Jesus as our Savior. Then we are saved. Then, so uh, we continue, after we are saved, we continue to repent of our sins and we continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior. So this is the first group of fruits of salvation. And then the second group, so, you know, as Christians, we continue to repent. If a Christian doesn't repent, then there's something wrong with his faith. And we'll continue to trust in Jesus as our Savior and our Master. And then related to relationship with God, that uh, we continue to have a close relationship with God. Um,
that Jesus said, He who abides in me, I'll always abide in him, and he will bear much fruit. So when we are saved, we always abide in Jesus. And if a person doesn't abide in Jesus, then it's like a branch that is thrown to the outside and it will be thrown into the fire. And that is not salvation. That is uh, hell. So if a person doesn't have a relationship with God at all, he can lose his salvation. So when we are saved, we continue to have a, a close relationship with God. And we continue to love God. That is the greatest commandment, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul. To love Him with all our heart, our whole being, to love Him. So um, these are the fruit, second group of fruit of salvation. And then the third group is related, related to good works that we obey Him. In Matthew 7, 21, it says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So when we are saved, we don't just, you know, pray to God and say, Lord, Lord, save me, save me. And uh, only when a person will bear the fruit of obedience. Now, we are not saved by obedience. We are not saved by obeying God. But when we are saved, then we obey Him. And uh, so those who don't obey God at all, when people don't obey God at all, then they are not saved. They don't have the fruit of salvation. It doesn't show that they have a, a born-again Christian life. And then number six, serve God, including glorifying God and blessing people in Jesus in our daily life and in ministry. In Matthew 25, there are three parables. In the second and the third parable, uh, they talk about uh, serving God. And in the second parable, it's the parable of the talents. So the servant with the five and two talents, they earn money back. And then they are rewarded with eternal life. And then uh, that God will uh, bless them. And then... Uh, the third person who had one talent and who buried the talents and he's thrown into the outer darkness where there will be the gnashing of teeth that is not heaven that is hell there is and there is no middle place called you know some people say there is heaven and hell and then there is a middle place there's no middle place there's only heaven and hell and so when people don't use the talents for God then they have to go to hell now, um, we don't, you know, when we obey God in these ways, we are not under pressure. The main pressure, the main motivation should not be saying, oh, if I don't do this, I'll, I'll have, I, I won't have eternal life. We should be motivated by God's grace, which I will talk about in a moment. So, um, and then in the third parable, is the parable of the sheep and the goats. So the sheep, they do the good things to Jesus' brothers, and then they are rewarded with eternal life. And then uh, the, the goats are the ones who don't do it to Jesus' brothers. Then they go into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So when people don't serve God at all, now serving God doesn't mean necessarily serving in the church. It could be, you know, uh, serving God can be encouraging other Christians building up their spiritual life, praying for them, strengthening them. So in our daily life, when we glorify God, all these are serving God. So Christians should continue to have these fruits of salvation. But the motivation should not be the law only. The main motivation should not be the law. The main motivation should be grace. For instance, when we repent of our sins and turn away from our sins, our motivation should be that you know, I know that sins are destructive. And then when I obey God, when I glorify God in my life, and when I live out God's holiness, God is very happy. And God will reward me. And then I will be like a person building my house on a solid rock. And when I trust in Jesus as our Savior, when we have faith in Him, and then He will bless us. He will, he will uh, reward us uh, that Jesus said, you know, uh, when you have faith like a little mustard seed, then you can move the mountain. So when we have faith in Jesus Christ, 
Jesus can do great things in our life and bless our life. And then when we have a close relationship with God, the motivation is that then we'll bear much fruit, that God will give us the power to bear much fruit. And then when we love God, He will prepare for us things eyes have not seen, ears have, have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So He will prepare for us things that is very wonderful. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, and also in Psalm 91, that because He uh, loved me, that God says He will raise Him up uh, to a high place, and He will exalt Him. And then when we obey Him, then He'll remember everything we've done for Him and He'll reward us. And when we serve God, even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, we will by no means lose our reward. So we all have these fruits as, as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, we all have these fruits. But we don't bear this fruit out of compulsion, out of pressure, under pressure. We, we should be saying, oh, uh, God is very happy whenever I serve Him. God is very happy whenever I, I love Him and obey Him. So I, I'm happy to repent. I'm happy to trust in Him. I'm happy to have a close relationship with God and, and pray to Him all the time and respond to Him all the time and love Him and obey Him and serve Him because God will uh, see all these things I do for Him and God will be very happy and God will reward me. So this should be the motivation. God's grace and His nature, that God's nature is that He, he will remember everything we do and He treasure the people who love Him and obey Him and He treasure what we do for Him. Okay, now uh, we should understand that we are never saved by obeying God. So those points are not, you know, are, the, are not what we do in order to have salvation. These are not what we do to have salvation. We trust in Jesus, we repent, and then we bear this fruit. These are the necessary fruit of salvation. So we bear these fruits, but these fruits are the results of our salvation. And we are never saved by obeying God. And we bear fruit of salvation naturally from our spiritual life. It's, it's natural. When we have this new life, then naturally we will love God, we will appreciate God, we want to obey God and glorify God. And then we should be ma mainly motivated by God's grace to, to follow Him, to obey Him. Okay. God very often gives us promises of grace when He tells us to do something. When we read through the Bible, we find that God uses His grace to motivate us all the time. He, um, he has many promises when He tells us what to do. When we study the Bible, we find that very often when God tells us what to do, He gives us promises of help and promise of acknowledgement. He'll acknowledge what we have done for Him and strength and acceptance and provision to provide for us so that we have the strength to do uh, what we need to do and reward us. We should use these promises to motivate ourselves and others to obey God. But many people just tell people what to do or use criticism to motivate people to change. So we can use God's grace and God is very happy with you and God's nature, He accepts us, He, he loves us, we are His children, we are precious in His sight, that is His nature and His grace. Grace is what He does for us. He will reward us. He will remember what we do. He will provide for us. This is what I said here. He will help us. He will acknowledge what we do for Him. He will strengthen us and accept us and provide for us and reward us. So that would be the main motivation. But I found that in some of, uh, actually in most of the assignments I've received, I found that uh, most of the people who wrote the assignments wrote down the motivation, it's just saying, you have to do it, you have to do it. And sometimes it's criticism, you didn't do it. So we should mainly motivate people with God's grace. An example of God's nature and grace. So this is an example. When God gives us some blessings, for instance, His strength, then this are His nature and His grace to motivate us to have strength from God. Okay, now first, 
when he wants us to trust in his strength God is a God of strength he has a lot of strength he has sufficient strength he has strength that no one can prevail he has strength to move the whole universe he has unlimited strength he cares about us and wants to give us strength he he loves us we are precious in his sight he wants to give us strength he wants Christians to live with strength not with weakness and he understand that we have all kinds of problems that stop us from having strength he knows that for instance many Christians lose faith Many Christians, they don't have a close relationship with God and then they don't have a close relationship with God and they don't have much strength. So God understands our problems and He wants to help us. He wants to accept us and He wants to mo uh, motivate us to receive strength from Him so that we won't be weak. And He's willing to help us overcome our problems and to give us faith so that we can have faith to receive His strength. So he wants to help us overcome the problems we have, our lack of faith, our weaknesses, our lukewarmness. He wants to help us overcome our problems or our emotions. He wants to help us overcome this problem and give us faith so that we can trust in God to receive his strength. Now these are four points that will help us to find God's nature and grace when we talk about any topic. Let me describe this again. His strength. When he wants us to have his strength, first he is full of strength. And then he cares about us and wants to give us his strength. And he understands our weaknesses that stop us from having strength. And he is willing to help us overcome our problems and give us faith so that we can have so that we can have faith to receive his strength. Okay, now if we talk about his joy, God is full of joy, heaven is full of joy. And He cares about us and He wants to give us joy so that we live our life joyfully. And He understands we have all kinds of problems that stop us from having joy. He understands that people have worry, people lack faith, people have different kinds of problems in their life that stop them from having joy. And He is willing to help us overcome our problems and to give us faith so that we can have joy. Now, of course, we will receive joy when we trust in God and have a close relationship with God and follow Him and obey Him, and then we'll have more and more joy. If a Christian doesn't trust in God, God's joy will not come. But this is uh, what God does for us so that we can have joy. First, He is full of joy. He cares about us and wants to give us joy. And he understands that we have different kinds of problems that stop us from having joy. And he is willing to help us overcome our problem, problems and give us faith so that we can have faith to receive his joy. And then if we talk about another, um, another uh, point, for instance, his wisdom. First, God is full of wisdom. God. He is very, very wise. He can create a whole world. He can create human beings and all the living things. He planned things in a, in a world and it all came true. What he, uh, his plan. And he cares about us and wants to give us wisdom. He wants his children to have wisdom. And he understands that we have all kinds of problems that stop us from having wisdom. Because many Christians, they look you know, they just look at the problems in life or they just follow the, the things of the world and then they don't have much wisdom. For instance, many Christians think that they yell at the spouse is being wise. It's not wise. If there is any problem, we can talk about it instead of yelling at each other. Yelling is foolishness. It will take away our uh, joy in a marriage and to take away our wisdom. So when we have wisdom, we want to follow God's way. Many people don't have wisdom when they handle problems in a family because they are controlled by their anger. Or in a church ministry, many people just, uh, you know, they, uh, in a ministry they use human effort only. 
they don't trust in God, they don't spend more time praying and trusting in God, relying on God to have strength. That is foolishness. Or when they hurt other people, when they cannot serve well, that is foolishness. Instead, we can motivate them and say, you know, even when you have done something wrong, you ask Jesus to forgive you, He will forgive you. And then what, whatever you do for Him, He's very happy. So then people will be motivated. Even when you give a cup of cold water to a little ones, God will reward you. So then we'll motivate people with God's grace. That is wisdom. And God is willing to help us overcome our problems and to give us faith so that we can have faith to receive His wisdom. So He wants to help us overcome our problems of foolishness, of lack of motivation to have a close relationship with Him. That, you know, and then He wants, He gives us faith so that we can trust in God so that we can have more wisdom. So, whatever topic you talk about, whatever nature of God you talk about, you can use these four points to talk about the nature of God um, so that people are motivated uh, to obey God by His nature and His grace because he, he Himself is full of that good nature and He wants to give us that good nature and He understands our problems that stop us from having that good nature and He wants to help us overcome the problem and have faith so that we can uh, receive His good nature and live out His joy and peace and strength and wisdom uh, and direction and motivation. <clears throat> okay, now we want to understand unconditional grace and conditional grace. God planned to give us grace before we do anything. That's unconditional grace. For instance, His salvation. He planned His salvation before anyone asked God to give people salvation. And God moved in our heart before we became a Christian. And God has a wonderful plan in our life before we became a Christian. And God planned to bless before we do anything. God has a plan already to bless us our whole life. Conditional grace is when we obey God, He will reward us. When we obey God, He will reward us. And actually all this unconditional grace, His promised salvation, His plan to bless us, His plan to move our heart to draw us to Him, all this is preparation for us to receive His grace. And we only receive His grace when we trust in Jesus and follow Jesus and, and obey Him and live our life according to His way. So we must understand that we should not say to people, God will for sure bless you. Now this, of course we can say this, but then we, have, we should explain more fully. God will bless you when you trust in Him. He wants to bless you. But when you have no faith, He cannot bless you. When you don't follow Him, He cannot bless you. He wants to bless you already. That's unconditional grace. God wants to bless us before we have faith in Him. God wants to change our heart before we have faith in Him. But if we don't change our heart, if we don't repent, when we don't trust in God, the blessings will not be able to come. That What I mean is that they cannot receive the forgiveness of God when they don't have faith. And they cannot have the relationship with God when they don't have faith. And they cannot have blessings of God when they don't have faith. Because in some of the assignments, I notice that some people just say, well, God will for sure bless you. God will give you all kinds of blessings. Now, when we say anything like this, we should add it at this statement and say, God wants to bless you. Now, that is always true. God wants to bless you. And when you trust in Him and follow Him, he, His blessings will come true in your life. Now, this is very important to understand this. When we trust in God and obey Him, then His blessings will come true in our life. Now, what if someone says, I have faith but I don't obey? Then what happens is the sin will separate us from, from Him also. That Jesus in John 5, 14 says that don't sin anymore lest you you know, the worst thing will come to you. 
the worst thing can happen to you when we don't have uh, when you uh, follow sin so it's very important that we don't live in sin so when we trust in Jesus and obey him and love him all these blessings will come so when we teach we always say God wants to bless you already in eternity God loves you already these are unconditional grace God loves us God has a wonderful plan to uh, to bless us he wants to bless us all these are true no matter what even when we have sinned seriously even when someone you know is not a Christian yet God still wants to save him God still wants to bless him God still wants to you know bring salvation to his life and uh, but when we say God will bless your life God will give you joy and love and provision uh, love I mean love in your life that you can experience his love God will give you peace and strength and provision and blessings in your family all this come only after the person trusts in Jesus and as Savior and follow Jesus including obeying him so we should understand the difference between unconditional grace and conditional grace that we should not just say God will bless you for sure we can say to a Christian, God will bless anyone who trusts in Jesus as his Savior, for sure. Because this person trusts in Jesus. But if a person doesn't trust in Jesus, God's blessings cannot go to his life because he has no faith to receive it. So we must understand unconditional grace is God's love for us, God's plan to bless us. God wants to bless our life. God wants to use our life. God has a wonderful plan in our life. These are always true. But His conditional grace that the blessings come to our life must, uh, uh, is that we must have faith in God, trust in God and, and follow Him. But all this still are grace. We must understand this are grace. So we don't say to people, you must trust in God to receive His blessings. Instead, we'll say this, God wants to bless you when you have faith you receive the blessings so it's when and you receive the blessings already for you so it's not very important that we don't say you must have faith to re, uh, to get god's blessings then it's like we take the initiative we don't take the initiative it's god who takes the in initiative he loves us he wants to bless us he wants to pour his blessing upon us when we have faith and follow him then the blessings will come into our life. This is how we should present to people. So in your assignments, please pay attention to this. So God wants to bless us. God, wants, uh, God loves us. He wants to bless our whole life. And when we trust in God, you use the word when. When we trust in God, He'll for sure bless us. Okay, and the problems of many people that... Uh, when we talk about the motivation by God's nature and grace it's that the problem with many people is that they say to people you have to obey now okay a voice saying you have to instead when we say when you obey God is very happy with you and he'll bless you so don't just say have to actually I don't like to use the word have to even though those are necessary fruit of salvation. I will say like this, when you have salvation, for sure, you flow out this fruit of repentance, continue repentance and, and trust in God and uh, have a close relationship with God and love Him and obey Him and serve Him. You, you, it will flow out from your life. Instead of saying you have to, after you're saved, you have to. I don't like to use the word have to because that is like pushing people we're not pushing people we're saying when you have God's life God's Holy Spirit will motivate us to change when we have his life inside us his life will motivate us to change and when we respond to him we'll change so uh, instead of saying you have to and also don't say you have to obey without talking about God's nature grace and promise or use criticism to motivate people to change so when we motivate people to change we always say when you when use the word when when you obey him 
He is very happy with you and He will bless you. When you serve God, for sure you not lose your reward. When you love Him, you receive things your mind, the human mind cannot think of. So use the motivation from God's nature and His grace. And don't use criticism to motivate people. Don't just say, uh, you're lukewarm, you have to repent. Now, okay, sometimes there, there is time to say that. When a person doesn't repent, when a person is lukewarm, even when we tell them not to be lukewarm, we tell them that, you know, uh, there is a warning in the Bible. When we don't, when we continue to be lukewarm, we can lose our salvation. So we don't want to be lukewarm. And then we, we will always use the positive motivation. When you have zeal for the Lord, God is very happy with you. God will for sure reward you and bless you and strengthen you. So we um, use His grace to motivate people to follow Him. Uh, the warning is for people who don't obey at all. We tell them to obey and they don't respond at all and then we can warn them. And the way we warn them is to, we can say it like this, you know, God wants to bless you. When you trust in Him and obey Him, He's very happy. But when you continue to disobey, then God sees that and then it will block the relationship with God. It can stop, you know, it can stop your relationship with God. It can affect your relationship with God. So don't, um, so we can tell people, uh, don't lose faith in God and repent and follow God and then God is very happy. So when, even when people, when we tell people about the sins, we want to tell them the blessings of God to motivate them to obey God and tell them that what will happen if they don't uh, repent. And then people don't see God's goodness and it's hard for them to trust in God. So when people just tell people, you have to, you have to, you, you must do this and criticize people for not obeying God. And then they don't see God's goodness. They think that when they're saved, then they, it's always saying, you have to obey, you have to obey, you have to do this, do that. It's always, uh, it's always they have to obey. Okay, now we continue here. That um, if we just push people to obey, we just tell people they have to obey. What happened is, they don't see God's goodness. They always think of God as, you know, uh, pushing them, forcing them to obey, and they live under pressure. And they will have to, uh, they will think that God is like a judge. God is like a police officer, always pushing them. So that's not how God is. God is a loving God to motivate us to obey Him and follow Him. So when they pro have problems, they don't believe that God will help them. So. When many people teach just by pushing them what to do, pushing them to obey God and, and, obey and serve God, then what happens is then people don't believe that God is good to them. They think that God is just using them. So the problem of many, uh, many people, many Christians is that they say you have to obey without talking about God's nature, His grace and promise or they use criticism to motivate people to change. And then people are pushed to obey instead of being motivated by God's grace. And then they don't see God's goodness and it's hard for them to trust in God or to love God. And they don't like God. God wants us to like Him and love Him. It's like a father. A father doesn't want the children to say, oh, I have to obey my father. If not, my father will beat me. You know, it's, we're not motivated by beating. God doesn't want us to force us to obey by beating us. God wants to motivate us by telling us that when we obey Him, He is very, very happy. So, and then when these people have problems, they don't believe that God will help them. They don't believe that God loves them. Okay, Christianity is not just about doing good and obeying God. But some people, it's always about pushing the members to obey, obey, obey. Now, I want to mo motivate people to obey too, but I will motivate people with God's grace. It's very important. I motivate people with God's grace, not with, not with force. It's with God's grace that I motivate people to obey Him. 
not with force. Okay, so is Christianity is not just about doing good and obeying God. And Christian is about God's goodness and His grace to convert us, to become people who delight in God and obey and glorify God all the time. So Christianity is about God's goodness, how wonderful He is. He's a good God. He's a loving God. So we should talk more about God's goodness and His love, uh, His love. And His grace, His grace for us to convert people, to become people who delight in God, that we like God and obey and glorify God all the time with gladness. Christianity is about telling people how wonderful God is, how good God is, how He is full of grace and how He wants to bless us. And when we obey Him, He is very, very happy. So this is how God want us to uh, motivate people. And that's how God motivates people too. God motivates people by God motivates people by His grace and His love, His nature. And God's wonderful nature, His wonderful nature, His love. Okay, so God's wonderful nature is His love, His holiness, His holy, His just, He has compassion, He has care for people, He can understand all people, He accepts us, He is wise, He is creative, He is selfless, He, he has ability to plan and manage everything. So all these are the wonderful things about God. He's a loving God. He has holiness, He is just and fair, He has compassion for all of us, He cares about us, He can understand all people, He accepts us, He has wisdom, He is creative, He is selfless, He put down Himself to come to bless us, He has ability to plan and manage everything. So these are some of His wonderful nature. And God's grace for us includes His salvation. He has His salvation for us. He has love for us. Okay, and um, His love for us, His acceptance of us, He accepts us, He's wonderful, He has a wonderful plan in our lives. He draw, draw us to believe in Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit and His Word. And the Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives. The Holy Spirit continues to work in our life. He protects us and He prepare wonderful things in all areas of our lives to bless us. He prepared wonderful things. He raised our life up to a higher level so we can become greater people, powerful people. He trained our lives. He trained us so that we can be, uh, be more equipped to serve God, to provide opportunities for us. And He remembered our good deeds. And He rewarded us and He gave us heaven and so on. So He has done many good things for us. Okay, and God likes us to respond to His grace in these ways. So when we know God is full of grace, we should respond like this. To delight in His grace and delight in God. So we should delight in His grace and say, God is so wonderful. God is a God of grace and I like God. I delight in God. And He likes us to depend on Him. 
He like us to depend on His grace and not to worry. He like us to um, rely on Him and not to worry about anything, not to worry about money. And He like us to be motivated by His grace, that we are motivated to obey Him because He loves us, He cares about us, He rewards us, and so we gladly obey Him. And He is happy for us to glorify His wonderful nature and grace. So I always tell people, God is a wonderful God, God is a loving God, God cares about us, God wants to bless us. And God wants us, like us, to lead people to delight in God. So when we do ministry, we help people to delight in God. They are happy with God. And they serve God with gladness. They serve God willingly. Instead of just obeying God like a slave. So they would be happy to obey God and serve God with gladness. And know that, knowing that God will reward them. And to have the spirit of a child of God instead of being a spirit of slavery. God wants us to be all like children of God. We rely on Him. We enjoy Him. We like Him. We serve Him with gladness. So we all, as pastors and leaders, we all should learn to enjoy God and love God and, and, and serve God with gladness. And some Christians just tell others what to do without telling them God's grace and promises. So if they just tell people, you have to repent and sin no more, you have to pray and read the Bible, you have to love God and love people, you have to support the church and give your offering, you have to do evangelism, it's all you have to. Then people just think of obeying rules in the church. And some Christians just motivate us, others to change by criticism. If it's just criticism, without telling them God's grace and promises that they tell others you have not prayed much, you have not repented of your sins, and God is punishing you now, and you don't have love for God. So it's just criticism. Then people just think of their shortcomings, and they think of God as a judge always punishing them. Okay, so we motivate people to change like this, with these four points. Now some people say, if you motivate people with grace, only now I'm not saying motivate with grace only we motivate with grace but we also remind them about the law these four points actually the fourth point is the law we motivate people with grace mo mostly and there is a reminder with the, the law of God and uh, then people are motivated to obey God by God's grace and they are reminded if they don't obey there are consequences now some people say, if I talk too much about grace, I'm afraid my members will take advantage of grace and do not obey God. And they won't serve God because they, are always, they always think about God's grace only. Now that is not true. That's not true. Now here is a full picture of motivation for people to change. First, God loves us greatly. His love is overwhelming. His love is greater than anything in the world. And there are people who went to heaven and they say, I enjoy, we enjoy this presence of God. It's so wonderful. They enjoy the love that they can never enjoy in the whole lifetime. They never experience any love like that. And then secondly, God has made us very precious and has wonderful plans in our life. So when we are in God, we are made very special people. We became very special people. And uh, He has a wonderful plan in our lives. So we become special people. We are not ordinary people. We are His special children and we are also His soldiers to bless more people. And we will be greatly blessed by God when we trust in Him, obey, love Him, obey Him and serve Him. So when we trust in Jesus and love Him and obey Him and serve Him, then God is very happy and He will bless us in every way. He will bless our whole life with joy and peace. He will provide for us. He will give us blessings. And His blessings include spiritual blessings and material blessings. Spiritual blessings means joy and peace and strength and wisdom and Material blessings means provision for our life, health, for our body. So all these 
God has promised for those who love Him, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And when we love God, God has prepared things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So God has promised us this. Do you want to have re uh, received blessings from God? Do you believe that God can give you blessings? It's very real. You know, I am a person who has enjoyed God's blessings all the time. When I follow God and obey God, I find that God's blessings follow me. And then the fourth point is a warning from the law. There will be destruction when we sin. When we disobey God and don't have a close relationship with God. So there is a reminder and a warning from the law. If people don't obey God when they sin, as Jesus said to the person who was healed of 38 years uh, of sickness and then he could walk again and then uh, Jesus said to him sin no more lest the worst thing will happen to you so if he sins his sickness could come back and he could be attacked by demons he could have problems in his life and his in his family and his whole life will be ruined so we must understand that there is destruction when we sin and when we disobey God and when we are lazy to serve God, there is destruction. But this should not be the main motivation. People should not say, Oh, I have to serve God. I have to do evangelism. If I don't do it, then God will punish me. We should not be motivated like this. We should be motivated by God's grace. When I serve God, God is very happy. God is uh, happy with me and He'll bless me and he'll, he'll reward me and He'll bless my whole life instead of saying, God will punish me. But there should be a reminder. If I disobey God, there are consequences. Even when we have served God for many years, if, even when we have done many good things to glorify God, and then we start to sin, we start to do bad things and uh, commit adultery or steal things, steal money from the church or uh, uh, hurt people. Whatever things we do or worry, and uh, become depressed any any of these sins it can ruin the whole life altogether so we must understand this but we should we should be all motivated by saying oh god is very happy with me when i obey him and i i can enjoy god i can serve god gladly i can serve god with gladness and then uh but there is a reminder, if I continue to sin, there are consequences. So I must be very careful. Now for myself, I'm very careful not to have any single sin. When any single sin comes into my mind, immediately I will take care of that. If I have any lust, if I see a sexy woman, immediately I will turn my eyes away from her. Immediately I will stop any kind of lustful thoughts. Immediately I will have holy thoughts and bless the person in Jesus' name and not to let the lust to continue. Whenever I have any unhappy feeling, I'll say, I don't want to stay unhappy. I want to rejoice in God and enjoy God and thank God and love God and enjoy God. So I always motivate myself not to let any sin come into my life. I don't want to gossip, I don't want to say anything negative. I always want to encourage people and motivate people to love God more. So I hope you understand this.